Hi guys, and welcome to Five Questions with Tina. My amazing guest today is my dear friend, Adam Pliska. Thanks for being here, Adam. Thanks for having me, Tina. I'm excited to be here. It is my honor. So I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about Adam before we go into these questions. Adam is the CEO of the World Poker Tour, and he has been with the company for 18 years, from bringing them public as general counsel all the way to becoming the CEO now. He is a lawyer and a graduate of UC Berkeley Law. He was a law firm lawyer, general counsel, and was offered a role in the Senate Judiciary Committee before moving over to World Poker Tour. Super cool, Adam. You're so awesome. Well, (laughs) it is uh, the advantage of living a long life is you end up doing lots of things. So it's uh, fun life. No, you're, you're awesome. You can say, I'm awesome. Um, and he is also, speaking of awesome, an Emmy-winning TV producer and a graduate of the USC Film School. You just have to, like, overachieve and make everybody feel bad about themselves, right? Well, no, you know, the, you are also, you've lived the life of, uh, of somebody at USC. I Actually, you know what I love the most about USC? I know this is not one of your questions, but the film school, as you know, is right next to the music school. That's right. I used to do some like sessions back in the day for student films. Yeah. I I, walk outside and hear all of the musicians playing and yeah, just be in wonder. Well, notice how I said you're a graduate of the school. I am not a graduate. I dropped out after two and a half years. So I'm Well, two and a half years was a significant amount of uh, fees. I always say I'm alumni of the USC in part because they took a lot more of my money than than Berkeley, I think. (laughs) So. I'm, sh- I'm sure you paid the tuition. That's what counts. Yeah, actually, actually, I did have a scholarship, so I did not pay the tuition. Oh, my gosh. All but right. All right. Well, I yeah. did have to pay for living expenses and books, which were insanely expensive. I remember one semester I almost had a heart attack because it's like $900 for, for books. Insane. Uh, uh, students no. even use books. Do they just not use just pads or little like devices stuck in their head these days? That would be cool. Um, okay, Adam, I'm going to ask you five questions. You can feel free to answer them however you'd like. You can talk for 20 minutes per question. You can talk for five seconds per question. Um, so are you ready? Yeah, I'm a lawyer. So do I get to take the Fifth Amendment? Or this is like just being at a grand jury. I cannot claim the Fifth. I just need to give you a truthful answer in my deposition. You do whatever makes you happy. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm going to try to go all the way. Hit me. All right. What is your favorite type of pizza? My favorite type of pizza uh, right now, you know, it's changed over time, but right now it's Pit Fire Grill. I don't know if you've eaten at Pit Fire Grill, um, but they have a Zoe's pepperoni, but you can't stop there. You got to bring your own creativity to the table. So I like to throw some olives in there, a little bit of mushrooms, some fresh onions. Um, Yeah, that's uh, that's a pretty great night. And I, I don't know about you, but I'm actually a big fan of cold pizza the next day oh i'm not gonna work anymore i don't like cold pizza. <laughs> okay this interview is done you know the best way to heat reheat pizza it takes a little more time but you put it have you seen where you put it in like a frying pan and then you cover it so it kind because of, if you put it in the oven it might like overcook it yeah and so i guess it like kind of crisps the bottom a little bit if you like your reheated pizza hot Okay. And then like the, the, the cover on it, it kind of like, I don't, okay, I'm getting really off topic. Right now. <laughs> I think I've hit the subject. Right. Yeah, yeah. Five um, questions about pizza. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a great interview series, Tina. I'm, I'm so happy to be here. Uh, okay, uh, question number two. Tell me about your hobbies outside of all the amazing things you do in your professional life. Yeah, um, uh, hobbies are important, I, I, I think, especially whatever your profession is. Hobbies are great because they allow you to analogize other, other things. They allow you to step back. And, I, and I'm a very big believer. I, I wrote something on this that, you know, that a person should strive to be interesting. You, we, have, we look for commonalities in each other, and, and that's positive. That, that bonds us in a sense. But we also have to bring something new to the table. So whatever it is, you know, it's the you know, the fisherman who knows how to, you know, is a chess expert or a chess expert or, or uh, the computer programmer who loves fly fishing. It's great. So to me, I love to swim. I like to go to the gym. Um, I ride horses um, several times a week. 
uh, which is a lot of fun. I tried to get you out, but you said uh, no. You were worried that it would uh, hurt your cello fingers. So, okay, we're not going to be able to do that. And as you know, I am learning to play cello from the greatest cello teacher of all time, who I harassed through an email saying, please, please, I'm a beginner. I don't know anything. Would you please take me? And I don't know how I get through. Adam is my, actually my only, one and only cello student. Um, well, speaking of cello, not to put you on the spot, we did just have our virtual cello. You just had a lesson, yep. You, do you want to play just a little? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, teacher. There we go. If it's bad, guess whose fault it is. <laughs> okay, go. <laughs> How many months? What did you say? Six months. Yeah, um, about six months. He's only about been six months. six months, and we've had every lesson over Zoom except for one when he was here um, in Vegas for yeah. for work. Uh, so incredible! Great job. All right. Well, you're a great motivation, and I, you know, what I appreciate is I've learned a lot about you and your style by how you teach. Where um, I, I can now know from your facial expressions. Uh -oh. how it went when I finish and you go, that was good, but. <laughs> so it's okay, great. Okay, anyway, okay. thank you, Tina. Oh, oh thank you. Um, actually, I saw so your bear slippers. That, that'll be my question number three. What, what's the story behind your bear slippers? Oh, you know what? If you're going to, so I travel all the time, right? I'm on a plane. I'm on, you have to have slippers for traveling. You've got to be, and um, to me, the slippers are grounding, right? But if you're going to get grounding, nothing is worse. You go to a hotel, so it's cheap little slippers. You can't fit into them. They feel like you just wrap them in paper, you know. But you know what? You just go. I know you're a big Amazon proponent. Go and get everything on Amazon. You just run your – just pull up Amazon and get yourself some bear slippers. It'll, it will change your life. That is the key to – the key to happiness is bear slippers, I think. Thank you. Okay, absolutely. Everybody, did you hear that? Get some bear slippers and you'll be happy. And if oh you're not, my God, happy, yes. you know, you know, the other thing is you're doing all these Zoom calls and everything else. You know, you have to act serious. You're on with bankers or lawyers. You just break out your Zoom slippers. I mean, your Zoom slippers, your your bear slippers, and they're like, this guy has to have so much confidence that he, he must know what he's doing. But uh, that's the, it is the key to life: bear slippers. I, I like it. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for that advice. Um, okay. Question number four. You have been to over 50 countries. Am I right? Yeah. Yes. yeah um, and so tell me about one of the craziest, like crazy, like, I mean, I know you probably, there's probably some stuff that you can't talk about publicly, but one yeah. of the craziest adventures that you can recall. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because honestly, you know, I mean, it is, we've worked in 50 countries, so it's everywhere from, you know, the animals, you know, the safari in South Africa to being in the uh, the bazaars of Morocco. I mean, we, we are in, you know, you know, we're in multiple continents and so we're traveling all the time. I think the craziest story um, probably happened when I was in Shanghai um, and I went to Shanghai and you, you know, there's a place called Shintendi in Shanghai, kind of a popular area. And so I went to this place. I the, My driver was really great. I went to tip him. I left my passport in uh, the car, never to see it again. I had to get a special uh, thing from the government to allow me to go to Beijing. Then I got there, and you can't tell right now because my hair is COVID hair very long, but when it's short, maybe you'll throw up a picture. You can see that my hair is very much like Barack Obama. So I have a similarity, not only am I left-handed, a lawyer, you know, all these other things. Uh, um, I, I tend to look at, uh, and speak a little bit like Barack Obama. So I get down to Beijing and 
they, I don't have a passport. And in China, as you know, you got to check in with a passport. So they tell him the guy who looks like Bar- uh, Obama is there. And Obama's just been in there. His half-brother lives in Shanghai. So I get to the Kunlun Hotel in China, and there is a receiving line. And I say, oh, I don't have my pa- Oh, don't worry. Don't, they're welcoming me. I don't have to go to the desk. No, no, go up to the room. The room is the most spectacular hotel room you've ever seen in your life. There's a butler. There is, it is just the, the I, I do remember this. The ceilings had some kind of illuminescent type of thing that made them look like stars. And uh, they thought they said, Barack Obama's brother is coming. So uh, that was probably my reception and not just the fact that I was a guy. And you know what? I, I could not get out of the country for 28 days um, because it was something like tomb sweeping week where the government like shuts down. And so my friend and I um, went all over the country. We just met so many different people from all over. We met a couple who was adopting their daughter the next day. We met just people that I'm still friends with. And uh, back then I even uh, would drink. And uh, so I'm sure that that was a little bit infused with that as well. But it was a wild, wild time. Some of those stories are for another day. I'll tell you offline, but. um, Wow, I I didn't know that. That's an incredible story. I love it. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Um, And question number five, what are your favorite qualities in a human being? So my uh, favorite qualities are, I love people who are grateful. I mean, I just think gratitude is just such an attractive quality in, in somebody, you know, no matter what's no matter what your thing in life is um i like people who are you know who accept reality and just embrace it and they're bold no matter what what it is that um you know i guess the corollary to the best qualities you know might be the worst qualities um and i don't like people who put a lot of their own anxiety on somebody on other people you know, we're all in this great adventure and I think that's great. And then you and I share one of the qualities that we both do not appreciate in people. Maybe I'm going to out you here, which oh, is, no. you know. Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me. It's just uh, uh, people committing to time, being punctual. Uh, yes, it really yes. bothers me when people are not punctual. I yes, think. yes, yes. So, you know, right now, if you are, if you are meeting the world famous phenomenon tina guo and you commit to it first of all i'm going to give you some advice if you get the chance to meet tina commit to a time put that in the calendar show up 10 minutes early everything's going to be great it's going to be the greatest meeting of your life oh my gosh i'm sure there's going to be some people watching this right now like friends where i have showed up late for stuff because i'm (laughs) probably going to call you out what a hypocrite. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, it's it's good to be early. It's good to be punctual, whether you're a musician or a lawyer or a CEO or an Emmy-winning TV producer or a member of the Senate Judiciary Committee or all these other things that Adam has done. Um, so, yes, that's true. And, uh, okay, well, that's, only, that's our five questions. Um, but do you have any last words of advice for people out there? Gosh. For, for the young you know- people of yeah, I, uh, I I recently, you know, sometimes I'll post different things about. I, I don't like to be presumptuous or assume that my that I have this all this wisdom that is going to apply to everybody else. But I do like to write occasionally. I'll write a, a series to myself called "Advice to My Twenty One Year Old Self," mm-hmm. and um, I guess the one that I've thought about most recently is that you know don't. Don't let the stress take the joy away from your life because you will not remember almost any stress. You know, the, the, the craziest, wildest things that you think, oh, my God, this is just filled. You're going to fill me with dread. You're not going to remember it. And you're, I mean, you're not going to pre- prevent it, all of it, but you can't let it steal your joy. We are on an adventure every single day. It is the journey that matters. It is not 
necessarily we're going because, you know, um, you know, the question I like to ask people all the time, Tina, do you know who the king of Sweden was in 1850? No idea. Not nobody else does either, except if you were in 1850, you would absolutely know who it is. One day it will not matter. So yeah. just and right now there's a bunch of Swedish people going, this is not true. This is horrible. This is, but anyway, it won't matter. It's important that you enjoy the journey. And um, that's it. That's really nice. I, I, I tend to like get stressed out sometimes, you know, from work and it's, it's very difficult for me to, um, to keep calm in certain situations. So that's really good to remember because you're right. In the end, you know, when I'm 100 years old, hopefully I'll live to be 105. Um, most of the stuff that like we all stress about is probably not going to matter, right? I, I was talking to a friend of mine, another friend of mine, um, like a week ago. And I think, what was she saying? Just, you know, she was like working, I think, with some um, older people, you know, in a, in a hospice setting. And, you know, never, and I'm sure people have heard this before, but never has she come across a patient or a person who said, geez, I wish I worked more or I wish yeah, I, yeah. in the, the moments, like you said, that you do remember um, and to, I guess, right, focus on what's important. So. Absolutely. I, I remember I was, uh, when I was leaving my law firm, you know, the law firms take a big bet with young attorneys because you don't know anything. I mean, you're just like a monkey in a room, you know, but they're paying you a lot of money to be there. And so there's this point where you're going to leave. You know, I went on, I wanted to go into uh, some business and stuff. And I remember this most stressful day of my life. I was like, how was I going to say it? You know, what will people think or whatever? And I remember and I was leaving a voice message for the group and I studied it and all night long. I couldn't sleep. And I learned an amazing lesson that for 24 hours, people will really care. And then, Something will happen in the news or their life will happen. Or literally, there's nothing you can do that will make people care more than 48 hours later. So um, enjoy life. Don't let it take, steal your joy. And um, yeah, and do all those great things that you do, well, you know, exercise and, you know, uh, meditate. And, you know, I saw you doing a pottery class and all that kind of stuff. You know, enjoy it. Thank you, Adam. Oh, this is so great. Thank you so much for being my very first guest on the very first episode of my new video podcast. Have you enjoyed yourself or has this been a terrible experience? Oh, it's been great. I, I'm only, you know, I only hope that uh, me being your first guest doesn't mean that uh, you won't get any more viewers, but uh, I am, um, you know, please, please, it gets better. That's how plays and stuff go. It just goes, it goes like that. So, you know, keep watching. Thank you so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Thank All you. All right. Thanks, Tina. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.